everybody. This is Stephanie Krupsack with the Pure Mountain Living Podcast, Things You Should Know. Uh, today I have with me Lisa Giesen bauer owner of Evolution Marketing, a Wisconsin-based, women-owned, certified B Corp, specializing in the area of global sustainability consulting and storytelling, environmentally responsible creative design and marketing, is Wisconsin's first triple bottom line managed communications consulting firm, and they offer their services in a carbon-neutral manner. Thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. (laughs) So let's get started. Um, Tell us a little bit more about your background in running Evolution Marketing and your interest in the environment. Fantastic. So 13 years ago, I started Evolution Marketing. Um, We are a niche sustainability consulting and environmental marketing communications company. And I say that we're a niche because really our competition is not in the United States. Our firm is very unique. So we're sustainability consultants first and foremost. What that means is we help businesses to implement sustainability strategies, practices, protocols, procedures, uh, change, do organizational change, culture change, broad picture, what you would define as sustainability. Those are all the things that we work within. So it could be operations, it could be corporate social responsibility, it could be employee engagement activities, health and wellness, um, energy, you know, tracking your energy, carbon, helping you with your carbon footprint. Those are all kind of facets of what evolution marketing does. So we help our clients with that first and foremost. And the secondly, we help them to then communicate with either their employees or their, their, their seeking venture capital. So stakeholders, it could be their greater community, or it could be their customers. So we kind of, we're, we're really super unique in what we're doing. (laughs) Definitely. And I know you just showed me one of your clients in Madison. You did this impact report. You want to talk a little bit more about that? Sure. I found really, sure. that really interesting. I could, <laughs> I could. So Evolution Marketing is what's called a certified B Corp or Benefit Corporation. And we are a third party. It's, they're called B Labs. And they're in Pennsylvania. What they do is they actually audit all facets of our business operations. And so it's, it's a pretty arduous process. And it, they look at all the things that we're doing to make sure that what we're doing is best for our consumers, our clients, because right? consumers and clients could be two different things, the community we reside in, the employees that we work with, as well as the environment. And because we're a certified B Corp, that meant we've had over 80 points through this third party audit. So one of the things Evolution Marketing likes to do is we like to work with other certified B Corps. So one of our marketing channels is interfacing with other businesses that are similar to ourselves in that they have this third-party certification. Artisan Dental in Madison, Wisconsin, came to us um, earlier this year because they're working on their first ever social impact report. And so their owner, one of their co- it's a co-ownership between a husband and wife, so the co-owner um, Scott is on this group called Be Local Wisconsin. So there's a group of us B Corps who are working on getting more businesses to join the B Corp movement and Scott is one of the co-chairs. And so he came to Evolution and asked if we would be willing to assist him in helping them put together their first ever social impact report. So that's a, that's a, actually a project we just finished earlier this week. And what's really nice is it's great to be able to work with like-minded people. And I'm not talking about political like-mindedness, I'm talking about social human values. And Scott's business really uses the the theory of conscious capitalism. That's one of the driving forces behind their business. And it's just really nice to work with businesses who understand the impact that they can have on the greater community, on their employees. I mean, they have an amazing, wonderful story. So I highly recommend that you Mm -hmm. talk to Scott (laughs) for a future podcast um, because their story is awesome. There's only two certified B Corp dental agencies in the United States, and Artisan Dental is Mm -hmm. the one in Wisconsin. Oh, here's the other thing about evolution marketing. We also give back a percentage of our sales every year to it's called 1% for the planet. So that means at least 1% of our sales, net sales, mm-hmm. goes back in cash to environmental nonprofits. Well, in Wisconsin, Artisan Dental and Evolution Marketing are both part of 1% and we're both B Corps. And so there's a small group of us, we're called B ones. So there's only about 100 of them in the whole world. Wow. <laughs> Businesses that are doing both 1% for the planet and using B Corp to make the world a better place. So I really enjoy working with Artisan because we have shared values. Mm-hmm. That's really great. So and you work with 
um, companies from any industry, correct? We do. Just with that focus of the environment and trying to support that. It's not just environment, it's sustainability. So mm-hmm. if you have a, if you're a manufacturer and you have a new product, um, we really like to work within the food sector. We okay. really enjoy food, mm-hmm. but um, we work with all different types of manufacturers and you have a new product that you want to bring to market and it has really cool sustainability attributes and you're not sure how to talk about those attributes, Evolution Marketing can help you to tell that sustainability story. Okay. okay. So it's within B2B or B2C. Um, I'm personally very passionate about local food. I started the O'Connor yes, Winter are. Farmers <laughs> Market years ago. So yes, I love local food. Mm-hmm. I try to support as many local farmers as, as physically possible. Uh, I grew up on a dairy farm. So food, agriculture, sustainable agriculture, it's kind of part and parcel to how I make sense of the world. So we really enjoy working with folks who are in that sector, but we have lots of clients who are not in food and farming. Um, mm-hmm. We do sustainability consulting, as I said, and we like to help other businesses that are mission-based. So meaning the business is really working towards making the, the world a more just and equitable place through the work that they're doing, you know. So whether it's mm-hmm. giving back through corporate social responsibility or making cleaner, better products, you know, products that have, you know, less negative impact on the environment. Mm-hmm. And I should mention we are in Lisa's beautiful home right now and kind of walking me through all of her cabinetry, um, tile work, everything is like very sustainable. So I think that's so interesting that you, you um, practice what you preach. It's in every every aspect of your life as well we do think thank you so much we we moved and we run recently renovated so yes we all the things we put into our new home as far as um systems are all environmentally responsible mm-hmm. and energy star rated spend a lot of time you know making sure that the we're making the best decisions possible yeah i like that <laughs> so is there a specific experience that led you on the path you are today that's a wonderful question <laughs> So way back when, in the time machine, um, my background is sustainable agriculture. And so I studied sustainable agriculture at Michigan State University. And when I was a graduate student, I had the opportunity to work in a multidisciplinary team. So I'm a sociologist by training, and I had the opportunity to work with hard crop and soil scientists and agronomists and uh, manure management experts and um, all different types of you know animal science folks. And it was, it was really it was a marvelous experience for me. And what it taught me was that it's very hard to communicate about sustainability. And so when a scientist would go talk to the community, the community may not understand what they're talking about. So that's when the sociologist would get brought in, kind of like the old school extension to help communicate the messaging of what is happening within science. And that's that's when I learned, again, over 20 years ago, (laughs) that the the reality is uh, sustainability is i mean it's a new it's a new discipline today but 20 years ago it was an emerging discipline so it was even more difficult for the public to understand what somebody meant when you started talking about sustainability and so there was this this time and it's how do i say this the right way it it was challenging for the public to understand sustainability so i thought gosh you know i love sustainability i'm very passionate about it and i'm a systems thinker which means everything is interconnected in my mind so i go back to the old old schools you know science of of biological systems that's that to me is how i make sense of sustainability so it's you know it could be an employee engagement it could be um energy efficiency it's all to me under sustainability right workforce development issues that's sustainability so as as I'm working, as I get done with graduate school, I come back to Wisconsin, I'm, I'm working in uh, marketing communications, I realized, gosh, you know, I really, I love sustainability, I think it's important, and I think that businesses should be run in a sustainable manner. And I had a great job, and I really enjoyed what I was doing, I was a marketing director, and um, I thought, you know, why can't the company I'm working for do more within sustainability? And I started to kind of look around and notice that nobody was doing really anything within sustainability, realizing that this discipline was still emerging. And I, and I in hindsight, is 2020. At the time, I'm just like, hey, people, we should be doing more. Um, but now looking back, I, I fully understand that it was such such a new discipline, a school of study at that point. Um, so I'm like, you know what? I want to start Evolution Marketing to demonstrate to other business people that, yes, you can run a professional service business in a sustainable manner, meaning that the things that we're doing are good for the community and they're good for the environment and we can still make a profit while doing it. You know, and that's what the triple bottom line is. So back, it'll be 14 years now in September, that's when we started Evolution Marketing. And what was interesting is at for 10 years, we publicly did a lot of uh, talks and shared 
things that evolution marketing had done because we wanted to demonstrate this is able to happen. You know, this is doable. It's not hard. It's just, it's changing your mindset, you know? And yeah. at our 10 year anniversary, we're like, well, we've done this. We've proved it can happen. Mm -hmm. So now let's, let's go to the next step and let's work on having other third party verifications like the B Corp certification. That's a third party audit that's demonstrating that we're actually doing the things we say we're doing because the other thing that's happened is transparency has become super important it right has. Mm -hmm. right we're in this whole new era of yeah. transparency and so it became even more and more important so i can make a claim that says you know yes we have 97 percent diversion rate for the waste from our from our office but if it's not being audited by somebody you don't know if it's actually true or not so having mm -hmm. a third party verify the things that we're doing has become more and more important in this day and age that's really great. So what do you want um, people to take away and learn from your efforts? Well, I want everybody to learn mm -hmm. that it's that you can do this. Mm -hmm. you, you can operate your business in a sustainable manner. I'm not saying you're going to probably do everything that evolution marketing is doing tomorrow, but that there's a really simple way to start. And the first way I would suggest you start, we have this program in Wisconsin. This is pretty cool because we're the only state in the country that has it. It's called the Green Masters Program. And so it was created by the Wisconsin Sustainable Business Council. And I've been an advisory board member um, for a number of years with the council. And I'm really proud of this program because it's an on-ramp into the sustainability world for any type of business, okay? So if you're a Wisconsin-based business, it's free for you to do this program, which how cool is that, right? I need to sign up. <laughs> yes, you do. Everyone, everyone, go sign up. So there's- Take a class with me. We'll be study buddies. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, and you know what? It's not, it's not even that hard. Oh, okay. So there's, <laughs> there's nine areas of sustainability. So mm -hmm. what you do is you answer questions about what your business is doing in each of those nine areas. And it's a not an audited program, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to start. And if you have a new green team or a health and wellness team, you're not sure where mm -hmm. to begin, you can use facets of this program to, to actually be the questions that you could address with your green team or with your health and wellness team. How cool is that, right? Yeah, that's really great. Free resource. So if you go to wisconsinsustainability.com, that's the website for the Wisconsin Sustainable Business Council, click on the Green Masters Program tab and you can check it out. I know that something we talked about earlier too was carbon neutral. Want to talk more about that? Yes, I would <laughs> love to. So there's, I'm going to hit you up with another free <laughs> program. Perfect. So there's this new tool that just came out. Um, so the United Nations... Um, worked with B Labs. So B Labs are the nonprofit organization that's behind the B Corp certification. They worked together all of last year to create a program called the SDG Action Manager. And that stands for Sustainable Development Goals Action Manager. And it's this new free tool that just got unveiled at the end of January. And you can go to this tool online. It's really cool. Sign up. And this is open to anybody. So you can be Anywhere in the world, you could do the SDG Action Manager. And what it has is it lists all 17 of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And you could pick a goal. So one of those goals, goal number 13, is carbon. So this is a goal that Lisa is very concerned about and I've been very involved with. So I've been studying carbon and understanding and looking at carbon and carbon footprints and Ramifications for carbon since I was a graduate student. So for over 20 years, I've been very interested in carbon and leading and living a low carbon lifestyle, specifically from agriculture, because agriculture done right can sequester carbon into the soil. Okay, so you can go in, do this, click this tool on, and there's a series of questions that the SDG Action Manager asks you. And it gets helps you to start to frame out and to think through how you can address carbon within your business. Because every business is a little bit different. And there's not just one solution. But what I'd like to argue is that it is a lot easier than people realize to start to manage their carbon. Okay, And this is something that I think we all should start begin to work on. Because at some point in the United States, our government will pass, whether it's carbon legislation or there's a carbon tax, some type of legislative actions will take place related to carbon. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I know it will happen. And I know that several individuals from both sides of the political aisle have, have uh, put together legislation, you know, to address carbon. OK, so it's coming. All right. And one of the things that I've read in the legislation examples that are out there right now is that 20 tons of carbon would be the minimum. So if your business um, creates more than 20 tons of carbon, you're going to have to offset it or you're going to have to do a carbon calculation for it. You have to do something with that. Well, 20 tons of carbon is about a company that has about five employees. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> right? That's pretty small. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, this is something that I think will impact many businesses. So with that said, I'm really excited to say that you can use the SDG Action Manager as a free tool to start to think about carbon. Okay, and to start to think about what things you can do with carbon. And then this um, April, on April the 20th of this year, for the first time ever during the Nelson Institute Earth Day, which is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, Mm -hmm. um, we, the Wisconsin Sustainable Business Council and Evolution Marketing, are co-sponsoring a business workshop on carbon, tactics and tools for carbon strategy and management. First time ever this is happening during the Earth Day. So there'll be a four-hour workshop by business people, for business people, to address carbon, okay? So it's going to be wonderful. It's going to be on Monday, April the 20th, 2020. And I definitely encourage you all to think, anybody who's interested in learning about carbon, this is going to be a really great workshop that's going to cover um, how, you know, how to address a strategy for climate and or carbon, how to do, um, how to track your carbon, what does a carbon footprint look like, it's going to be kind of a 411 and all the key terms and language associated with carbon. You're going to learn about ways that you can reduce your carbon, ways that you can um, offset your carbon. It's going to it's going to be and then of course report your carbon. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be a really great in depth workshop. We're really excited to have um, several key leaders from Wisconsin and outside of Wisconsin coming in to speak in our session. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be really. I'm very excited about it. So I strongly encourage everybody to attend, consider attending the Mm -hmm. Nelson Institute's 50th anniversary Earth Day event on April the 20th. Perfect. We'll have links up for everybody to check that out. I know I'll be attending as well, so very excited for that. Yay! (laughs) Wonderful. So thanks for sharing all that info. So I know you kind of touched upon this already about how your work directly impacts the environment and society. Uh, Maybe give us some examples of some clients you've worked with and some big impacts you've seen. Okay, so, <laughs> you know, we've done such a variety of different work over time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting when you talk about impacts because there's a variety of impacts that the work we've done over the last 13 years has had. Um, one of the impacts that I'm really, um, really happy, happy to share, it's a, it's a very great story. Um, Evolution Marketing had the privilege and honor of working with the city of Oconomowoc for a number of years. And the city of Oconomowoc had what was called the Lead by Example team. And so we coordinated the Lead by Example team, which was a team across the city of Oconomowoc that was looking at and working towards creating a plan. It's called the 25 by 25 plan. So how the city would reduce their um, footprint their energy footprint by 25% and increase their renewables. And that's with a baseline year of 2008. And then they would increase their renewable consumption by 25% by 2025. Okay. Mm -hmm. This came out of federal legislation and then it came to the state of Wisconsin back in 2008, 2009. And anyway, um, we got, we got to work with the city of Oconomowoc on, on this plan. And, um, the first plan was done in 2009. And then we were able to work with them again in 2013, five years later to do a report. And I I'll give you links to both of these so you can share Mm -hmm. with people. Um, but what was really cool was to see how between a five year time period to see how the city took and brought into their decision making the idea of, social responsibility or environmental responsibility and sustainability. So what ended up happening is as they were doing several new building projects as the city grew, the city then the city um, staff folks brought in, you know, the cool lessons that we were learning through the team. They brought that into the building codes. We got to work with the city planner, the city economic development director, the the head of the utilities brought in um, energy efficiency measures and some forms of renewable energy into all of the new building projects that the city was building. So it was really cool to see kind of how a community can grow with sustainability. You know, and, it, and you don't think about the buildings that we're in every day, but buildings account for such a large percentage of the energy that we use, right? And if you can take and make that building more efficient, the more efficient that the building, the less energy it needs to use. And that's important when you're looking at growing a community, yet reducing your, you know, your overall footprint. So does, is that a good example? Yeah, no, that's perfect. Yeah, definitely. So. And there's really cool data. So I can actually, all yeah, the data, I'll yeah, share. Link with, it. That'd be really interesting for people to read, I Because it's all mm-hmm. public. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah, to work with, you know, a city. So definitely. So what is your message to listeners on how they can impact the environment or, soci- or, environment or society on their own? 
Like what could we do as individuals? So there's all kinds of stuff everybody <laughs> could do. So I'm going to reference a uh, report. So every year Evolution Marketing puts out an operations impact report. And um, this year, last year we started calling it the Carbon Footprint and Operations Impact Report. We're going to put a link in um, mm-hmm. on the podcast for everybody to look at. But what's kind of cool is that one thing that a small business could do, small or large, can start to look at their policies. And you could say, okay, what types of policies can we implement that would result in creating a low carbon future? So one of the policies that Evolution Marketing has created, and this this might sound silly, but it actually has tremendous impacts, is that we decided that one of our policies is a purchasing policy. So all of the things that we, when I say things, all of the materials that we purchase that are paper or um, office, like uh, so paper towel, toilet paper, um, printer paper, folders, post-it notes, any type of paper products that we're bringing into our office, will all be FSC certified with some level of recycled content. I'd love to be able to say, you know, 100% recycled content, but the reality is a lot of post-it notes are FSC certified, but they're only 10% recycled content (laughs) or 15%. Mm -hmm. Same thing with folders, you know, the the folders you would use for your office. Um, But we've put that policy in place and we've had that policy in place since I want to say it was 2008. It says the date in the operations impact report, either 2008 or 2009. But by doing that then, we are supporting the sustainable, which the, so FSC means Forest Stewardship Council, which is a sustainable forest management program. And so that means that all of the paper products that we're buying have been audited by a third party to make sure that, and it, you trace it actually from the um the, tim- the forest where the, where the trees are grown. So they're in a susta- they're in a sustainable forest management program. And then they cut down the trees and it's chain of custody all the way down to the finished product. Wow. So again, it may not sound like this is a big deal, but it, it actually is. We're supporting a program that's doing this third party audit to make sure that the trees are actually, you know, they're raised in a sustainable manner and the process itself is sustainable. You know, and then those manufacturers who are either manufacturing the paper towel or the folders, they have processes they need to follow as well to be FSC certified, mm-hmm. right? So by putting that purchasing policy in place, we're helping to sequester more carbon because we're keeping trees in a more sustainable manner instead of, you know, supporting clear cutting of trees. That's great. <laughs> so that's something everybody yeah, can do like is that's... a purchasing policy. Yeah, I think, I, like I, think I think really um, most of us we don't read labels. You know, most people don't mm-hmm. look at a label. I mean, yeah. okay, I do. I love labels. Mm-hmm. Me too. I mean, yeah, what's more convenient, I guess, sometimes is what you, you grab. But no, I'm definitely a label so, reader. <laughs> so I think taking a look at labels, mm-hmm. seeing how local, here's the other thing, local mm-hmm. food, yeah. right? So do you know, I'm sure you probably know this already, but the average apple travels 1,400 miles between the tree it was grown to the plate that somebody's eating it. Wow. Okay, so definitely go to your local farmer's market. (laughs) Shop local, exactly. Mm -hmm. So buy local, shop local, even in the middle of winter. We have winter farmer's markets in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Very good ones, by the way. Exactly. It's amazing. The domes. (laughs) We have them in in Milwaukee, Mm -hmm. and we have one in Oconomowoc. They're they're all over. You know, so support local food, support local farmers. Mm -hmm. Uh, When you're buying products in the grocery store, look on the back of the product. Where was it manufactured? You know, what are, what ingredients are in there? I'm not saying that you have to buy everything organic. That's that's not what I mean. But I mean, look at what's in the product. You know, start to make more responsible decisions. You know, um, I think these are all little things that we can do every day. Um, another one of the clients that I've done sustainability consulting with, Rebel Green. It's a line of green cleaning products. They're manufactured here in Wisconsin. It's a woman-owned business. And Rebel Green uses all natural essential oils in their products. So it's they smell awesome. I mean, I have them here. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they smell awesome. Mm-hmm. But it's really cool because by supporting Rebel Green, by buying their cleaning products, which I think work phenomenally well, you know, I'm also not contributing to indoor air pollution mm-hmm. because there's no synthetic se- yeah, sense. Yeah, that's huge too. Right, in the product, you know. So I think it's thinking through, you know, what am I buying and why Why am I buying this product, you know. People talk about brand loyalty. I, I'm more about the impact of the products I'm buying. So when you when you go to the grocery store, I mean, we all have, in, or Target or, you know, whatever mm-hmm. store you shop at. The other thing is the certified B Corp logo. Um, look for products that have the certified B Corp logo on it because that means that that product or that company, actually, technically that company has been audited by B Labs to make sure that they are, they're doing things that are better for all of humanity basically Mm -hmm. 
Now we talked earlier about like even food labels, like making sure it's organic, you know, things like that, or it's a fair trade company or things like that that make you feel a bit better about purchasing it because yeah. you're supporting that. And the B Corp too. I mean, that's that's yeah, a big yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. B Corp. I actually ha- I do this talk um, about labels. Do you know that there are over thirty five hundred different certifications that could go on labels? Wow, that's a lot. I did not know that. <laughs> there, well, the last time I checked, so mm-hmm. it's probably, probably more. more than it's probably more than you should that. have your own label. I think <laughs> an evolution marketing label, <laughs> the, the Lisa's label. Yeah, Ooh, alliteration. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but but my point is that mm-hmm. there's so many certifications and it's hard to kind of know what they all mean, right? Yeah, or like how because like anything can say natural nowadays, so natural is not regulated. So like, but they make it look like a label, but it's really not. So yeah, that is huge actually. And that's why the third party verifications are so important. Mm-hmm. So if if you're gonna buy organic, understand what that means. If you're gonna buy um, non-GMO project verified, know what that means. Same thing with fair trade. You know, make sure that you understand mm-hmm. what that means tied to the product. Yeah. Great advice. Do you have like a, a sheet anywhere that tells you what some of these uh, good labels are? <laughs> so I am. Um, I could send you the link to the PowerPoint mm-hmm. that I give. So okay. that way you have and, and OK, so there's this other one. We talked about one percent for the planet before. Yes. Mm-hmm. There are products in Wisconsin that are one percent for the planet pr- products. Oh. So one percent of okay. all sales um, go back to Wisconsin or go back to environmental mm-hmm. nonprofits. Okay. So I will send you that I PowerPoint. Love that. And everybody should work and shop with them. <laughs> yes. And then and, so, and I actually cool. I list mm-hmm. all the Wisconsin businesses in my PowerPoint. Oh perfect. Okay, great. So and can we share that with everybody yes. too? Yes, we okay. will connect the PowerPoint. <laughs> wow, you're gonna have loads of information, everybody. <laughs> Everything you want to know about sustainability. Yeah. Every time I'm with you I feel like I have to take notes. <laughs> so lots of info. Well thank you so much for sharing all of that. Oh yeah, you're welcome. So what are some of your short-term and long-term goals? So that could be business or personal related. Um, So, um, okay, so business related goals. Mm -hmm. So this year, um, every year Evolution Marketing picks a, um, how do I say this the right way, a responsible or or more in-depth sustainability topic to work on. So for example, a couple years ago, I spent... um, a year working on supply chain sustainability. And so all of these things come back to what we're doing in evolution marketing. And I've been passionate about carbon for years. And with the advent of the new SDG action manager tool that we were talking about earlier, I have decided that 2020 is the year (laughs) of talking about climate, carbon, and the sustainable development goals. So this year I have several um, programs that I'll be part of, I'll be speaking at throughout the year lined up that will be touching on those topics. Because I really also believe that, so it's 2020, right? Mm -hmm. We have 10 years to meet the SDGs, which are the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We have to meet them by 2030. So this year, I'm working on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And there are 17 different UN Sustainable Development Goals. And then there are 150 targets. So these are sub goals with under the main goals. And then there's indicators that are associated with each of those targets. And one of those groupings is the SDG action, SDG action 13, which is climate action. So this year, I'm my mission (laughs) is to get out there and promote this so that people understand, not just, you know, in the global market space, but in Wisconsin, that you know, we all need to work together and we all have a stake in the game, right? Mm -hmm. And it's time that we all step up to start to take action because we we can't address the climate, we can't address the climate crisis, nor can we address a lot of the SDGs without really working together because all of the, everything's interconnected. So what I really like about the sustainable development goals is that it shows how interconnected they are together. So it's cool. If you haven't checked them out, go look, go look at them, sustainable development.un.org. And I'll, I'll give you a link to it and everything. Perfect. Um, but it's, it's really very amazing. It's a great way to look at how to make the world a more equitable and just place for all. Um, so that's kind of my goal this year mm-hmm. is to talk about climate, to talk about this really cool new tool, share with the world that mm-hmm. this is available and it's free. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anybody can use it. And then um, to just to kind of start to talk about what your business can do, you know, because I think I feel like sometimes we need to be empowered. You know, and for me, 2020 is a year of empowerment because we've got 10 years to meet these very big goals that the Mm -hmm. U.N. has that basically everybody, I believe it's 108 countries around the world have agreed to. Wow. Okay. You know, so we all have to work together to make these things happen. Mm -hmm. And start now. That's right. (laughs) 
And that's well, and that's part mm-hmm. of talking about carbon neutral. Yeah. That's why Evolution Marketing last mm-hmm. year we became we were able to now offer our services in a carbon neutral manner because I I really believe how important this is. So I'm not going to ask somebody to do something that I'm not willing to do. You know myself. Yeah, no, exactly. Okay. So um, on December 11th, 2019, Evolution Marketing was one of 534 businesses from around the world that are certified B Corps through the B Corp Climate Collaborative that have agreed to publicly reduce our emissions to be net zero scopes one through three by 2030. And so for Evolution Marketing in last year, in 2019, um, moving towards offering our services in a carbon neutral manner, that was a step, that's one of the steps that we're taking to show that we're serious about this Mm -hmm. and how very important it is, you know, and we're we're joining with, I mean, all these other certified B Corps from around the world to do this. Mm -hmm. It's really powerful. Yeah, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. like, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's really great. Um, so what does preserving the environment mean to you? Wow. So preserving the environment? Okay. I guess I <laughs> would say what does regener- re- regenerating the environment mean to me? Because I think ah, okay. to me, I'm not so much about preservation as I am about growing and improving, right, and regenerating. Mm-hmm. So, again, my background is sustainable agriculture. So I think about um, – we should leave the world a better place than, you know, than it was when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's a great way to look at it because, yeah, preserving is just maintaining, but you want to make it better. I want to make it better, like yeah. That. And, I mean, and for me, like, when you think about it, I mean, so we moved homes two years ago. So all of the 2019 year at our new home, we worked on our yard. And when I say worked on our yard, I mean we had, like, over a quarter acre of buckthorn we had to remove. So we, we fought invasive species last year. <laughs> Um, we have some heritage trees. That means that the tree is several hundred years old. So we have over a 300-year-old oak tree on our property. And so we have to take care of the oak tree. And we have to do things that I didn't even know we had to do. To So it's not only that we're maintaining the tree, but we're helping the tree to thrive. So one of the things that we're doing in 2020 is we're having our trees fed. I didn't know that was a thing. Like special food? Like special food <laughs> for the trees. Okay. like treatments to help the trees grow and be strong Mm -hmm. we're also having the trees trimmed and there's a special way that you're supposed to trim the trees again i'm not an Mm -hmm. arborist right i'm fascinated it's amazing Mm -hmm. to me so things like that i'm not only preserving the tree but i'm helping the tree to be better right Mm -hmm. and so when i look at my yard and the things we're doing in the yard we're we're planting natural grass seeds We're, we're we're um putting in more perennials we're putting in Wisconsin local native perennials so that we don't have to, so if we have a drought in the future, the plants will survive, Okay. you know, so we're, we're yeah. kind of, we're trying to make it better. Plus we're trying to sequester more carbon. I mean, I'm huge into carbon sequestration. As you can tell, my home, whole home is filled full of plants. Mm-hmm. So I'm all about plants. And I think the more plants we have, the better we, you know, the better it is for everyone. So we're looking at, we're going to be planting several trees this year okay. to help, you know, draw down more carbon out of the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and um, certain plants actually filter like rays from your computers and electronics and then filtering the air, and it's really interesting. can do a lot. So that's great. Thank so now you're yeah. taking it from your company to your home to your neighborhood. So Right, exactly, mm-hmm. to, and to our community. I mean, we're, we're all about it, and we, um, we shop at a local farmer's market store mm-hmm. that's up the street, and it's, that farmer's market store supports a farmland trust. So okay. by by shopping at the farmers market store, we're helping to put money back into the local economy that helps to help farmers stay on the land longer, you know, and keep that land in in a sustainable way. Mm-hmm. It's really great, and we are going there later too, right? We are. <laughs> we're going to take a field trip. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, what is your personal mantra or theme song that gets you into a good state of mind, or kind of redirects you back to that good place? Okay, so <laughs> uh, I don't have just one mantra or theme song i have i have several um phrases or beliefs or statements i guess you could say so the the first one is uh, gratitude i mean each and every day i'm I'm grateful to wake up in the morning you know so i'm I'm grateful for the life i have i'm grateful that i'm able to do the job that i'm doing and that i'm able to help other businesses on their sustainability journey and help them to share their story i mean that that to me it's it's so fulfilling and it's it's wonderful and i'm grateful for living in the village of neshota surrounded by nature and i mean we have golden eagles that fly over you know so sometimes i'll be working in my office and i'll look outside and i'll be stuck on something and a golden eagle will fly over and i'm thinking Oh my gosh, how amazing is that? That I just saw a pair of golden eagles fly over my house. Wow, right? Mm-hmm. So gratitude. Yep. <laughs> so if I'm having a bad day, I take a moment, I get present, 
you know, because a lot of times we're not present, right? And so I become present in the moment and I think about what I'm grateful for. So that's the first thing. Okay. Second thing, um, I'm all about continuous improvement. And I think this is a sustainability side of me coming <laughs> out. But I really think that as we do things, we get better at them. And we, we learn more as we do things, you know? And I'm all about what's next, right? And if we, and I'm about innovation. So continuous improvement to me leads to innovation. And I have all of these, I call them like Lisa life hacks. So like life hacks when I cook, I love, we love to cook at my house. We love to use local food. So I have life hacks for that. There are things that maybe 20 years ago, I didn't know how to do, but because now I make Indian food, I have my Indian food hacks, you know, or mm -hmm. I have my, you know, preparation, my homemade spaghetti sauce hacks or, you know, things okay. like that. So I'm all about continuous improvement, not that it has to be better, but it's about making the process better, right? Yeah, more efficient. All right, the other thing, the third thing on Lisa's list is um, where there's a will, there's a way. I really believe that the power of the mind is, our minds are so powerful and people don't use them as often maybe or to the best of their ability. So I believe if you dream something, you can make it a reality and that it's okay to try something and fail at it, you know? But I, I really think that we should challenge ourselves and just figure out like what's out there and what can we do? Because in, innovation comes when you fail, you know, and it's okay to fail. I think I think there's so much pressure put on us in our society to, to always be perfect and always, you know, never fail. That, but that's that's garbage, right? Through failure, we learn all kinds of great things. We learn who we are. We learn new skill sets. We learn I mean, how many things have been innovated. How many innovations have occurred, I should say, because of failure? Like all of them. <laughs> right. So, mm -hmm. so I, think, I think that's the other thing is just having the perseverance and the tenacity to try something and to, to make a plan to say, we're going to try this. And you go on the plan, you start working, and if you don't make it, it's okay. Or if it doesn't work out the way you thought it would, that's okay. But you tried. I think that's important. Because I feel like sometimes people forget to try. And I think we get hard, we're hard on ourselves when we try and we fail. But, that, but again, that's okay. Right? It's accepting. But this is where we're at and this is who we are and you know mm -hmm. what we have a new experience and that new experience makes us a better more well-rounded well person yeah i feel like even through the failures you can at least pull one thing you've learned from it which you turn into a positive so because you know what not to do down the road things like that so exactly and, it, mm -hmm. and what doesn't what doesn't kill you makes you stronger right definitely so i mean there's so those, those are kind of like how i yeah. make, how i make sense of the world remember mm -hmm. i grew up on a farm so yeah you, you know <laughs> i'm a country girl too <laughs> so, you know you have lots of failures happen right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> you try to grow something it doesn't work i mean it's mm -hmm. like i mean i love gardening but yeah. sometimes you plant something in the garden it doesn't grow yeah it just doesn't come up it, and it can vary by year too and you don't know why really it's like trial <laughs> exactly and so mm -hmm. so that's okay you know and that's i feel like that's how life is you know so just keep throwing those seeds mm -hmm. keep trying new things yeah yeah i like that good uh, metaphor <laughs> with the garden <laughs> throwing those seeds out there <laughs> well we, we are avid gardeners here too <laughs> mm -hmm. i miss having a big garden <laughs> but definitely relate to that okay so how can uh listeners best reach you sure so our website is green mkting or marketing.com mm -hmm. That's Evolution Marketing website, and my email is lisa at evolutionmarketing.biz. Perfect. And we'll have links to everything up that you can they can contact you and all of the great information you've shared with us, links for that too. So this has been a lot of fun, and thanks so much for being on the show today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be a podcast guest. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, everybody, and have a great day. Thank you.